Today, I want to carry on where I left off talking about match rods. I'm talking about traditional light line match rods. And in the past, we used to talk about stick float rods and waggler rods. And in a nutshell, the difference was that a stick float rod was very tippy, a bit stiffer in the middle section and usually had a spliced in solid carbon tip and a waggler rod left out the spliced in tip so it had a hollow tip a little bit softer in the top end of the middle section so the difference in stick float fishing to waggler fishing really is mainly in the strike the stick float strike is just a, a little lift and because you're in such tight control of the float sometimes you need to do those little tiny flicks just to get the line exactly right because of the wind is, is causing it to drift but without disturbing the float so it's a very subtle thing with a uh, fishing a waggler and i'm talking about proper waggler fishing i'm not talking about people put on a little um, float that looks a bit like a waggler bottom end only stick it under their rod tip and say i'm fishing a waggler well yes and no real waggler fishing is at some distance and that distance might not be a very big distance it might only be two or three rod lengths or it could be pretty much as far as you can cast or catapult out bait but waggler fishing developed as, as a river method really taking the floats that people had used on almost still or very very slow rivers and still waters and river anglers found that they could fish at a, a much longer range than they could up with stick floats and bolsas and avens and so on and that's what waggler fishing's about and because of that range the strike tends to be more of a, a sweep instead of that little just little lift with a stick float that sweeping strike and sometimes at extreme range and with a downstream wind there's a great big bow in the line and even at the end of the sweep anglers would sometimes find that you'd you'd start winding in be before you actually felt the fish there's so much slack out there but the fact that there there had been that sweeping strike had set the hook small hook usually small very sharp hook and it was just a matter of getting that contact the rods i've got and the ones i was talking about last week include the tricast allerton premier match rod which has got a splice tip which in itself is a classic stick float rod it's tippy it's light, lovely to use on the river. And yet that rod is well enough made, well enough designed that you can fish a waggler with it. It's not horrible to fish a waggler. It, does, it feels okay. The Titan 2000, another brilliant rod, on the face of it looks like a waggler rod and I tend to use it waggler fishing. But it's... Uh, what should we say crisp enough that you can fish a stick float with it in other words it's it's not sloppy you can do that little lift strike spliced in tip rods are fairly rare nowadays i i believe browning as they were i don't think the name they're using the name browning anymore because they had to license the name They had the sphere river rods and they had splice tips and I've had a a waggle, not much more than that of them. And they're, they're very crisp rods and they'd be lovely for a stick float. What they're like for a waggler, I don't know. I suspect they're okay. They're good enough rods to do that. One other rod I'm going to mention, this is only going to be a quick video, is that someone last year gave me a Dave Harrell splice tip rod um, 
I'm trying to think what the proper name was it. That had a splice tip. It's based on a Harrison blank, which may be very similar to the GTI blanks, which are still available. They don't sell the made up rods, I, I believe. You can you can make one up, but it's going to cost you about £200, which is a good price for a very good blank. They feel a bit heavier than the, the latest rods. Someone, that same person who gave me that rod, has recently sent me a, another tip for it. So I've now got two tips, that the original splice tip and also a hollow tip. So whether that's a, a nice rod to fish with a waggler with the hollow tip, I have fished a waggler with the splice tip. And again, like the Allerton match, it is versatile enough to fish a waggler. It was fine, which I think that is the real mark of a good match rod that you can fish a stick float and fish a waggler with the same rod without having to change rods. And this idea of two tips is, is not a new one. I believe Shakespeare did a, a Kevlar match years ago that had both tips for the rod, different tips. And those uh, people who were involved in the design, people like Dave Harrell and Ken Giles, were sort of saying use, use the splice tip for the stick float and the hollow tip for waggler fishing. The late, I don't think Daiwa, Daiwa did quite a lot of splice tip rods over the years. I've got um, one rod left. I got an amorphous whisker match rod. It's not the expensive one, it's a cheap one. And that's the stick float one with a splice tip. There was a waggler version in the expensive and the cheaper versions. And I did have a Tommy Pickering Connoisseur stick float rod at one time, which I sold on nice on a stick, not so good on a waggler, that one. And they did the Spectron. The rod I showed last week, the Team Daiwa X, has got a fairly fine tip. I don't use it much on the rivers. It's OK for river fishing, but it's I prefer it for waggler fishing and on still waters. It's very forgiving, but an amazing amount of power that comes in in a way that it's almost difficult to get broken up on that rod if you hook something big. I don't think the current Daiwa rods include any splice tips at all. There are other makers of match rods, people like Colmick and uh, Preston. Garbolino, Maver, Drennan. Drennan used to do some splice tips. I don't, don't think they do anymore. I'm not a great fan of the Drennan match rod actions. For some reason, they just, they're very fishable. You can fish a stick or a waggler with them. When I've been fishing with people who've been using them, they seem to bounce too many fish. I don't know why. I don't get that, but that's what I've observed. I tend to pick out a rod according to what I'm going to do on the day. If I'm grayling fishing, I might use my Avenger 2000. If I'm fishing the upper star, it might be, uh, if I'm after chub, probably uh, the same rod again, or the TriCast Allerton. If I'm fishing on the still waters, probably either a Microlite, Normark Microlite or the Titan 2000 or the Daiwa Team Daiwa X and the Harrison Blanked, which is the Dave Harrell rod, might come out just about anywhere, <laughs> anywhere that I fancy giving it a whirl. I did use my uh, Titan 2000 a couple of times this week. It, it's a place with a very tight spot. There's no room to film really without you're almost too close to the camera to get a decent job. And uh, I was fishing two pound Maxima, 0.08 hook length, 22 uh, Camerson B611 barbless, and uh, double maggot on that with a little waggler. Started off getting a few roach, and uh, then I hooked a carp. And it just shows you what a brilliant rod that Titan is, because at first it, the line had gone round its 
I'd hooked it in the mouth, but the line had gone around its dorsal, so it almost floated up to the top, just very gentle pressure. And it didn't really know what had happened. Then the line came off that the dorsal fin, and it started to slowly wake up. And after three or four minutes, it really had woken up, and it was tearing off and took some beating. But I did beat it, and this is one of the, the hallmarks of these top-class rods because it went over 11 pounds. The carp were feeding. I, that was the only one I hooked, but a couple of people fishing for them were, were getting uh, them fairly regularly. And I did get some of what I was really after, which was some nice roach up to a pound and a quarter, which was uh, just the job. I hope I, once again, I've got you thinking. Until next time, it's goodbye for now.